Welcome to GIMP Magazine, Director's Cut, Issue 6, what we're calling Next Gen GIMP Magazine. Uh, what we're seeing in the background here as the Director's Cut, I'm going to do some voiceover work here on top of uh, the teaser that we ran a little bit uh, a few days back. And I um, uh, really love the music that we brought in for this. We've got the logo going uh, up on top of some B-roll. Um, uh, cloud sort of uh, things going on in the background there. We've got the logo coming in from uh, Aaron, who is the uh, featured uh, photographer for this issue of Gimp Magazine. Some fantastic stuff from Aaron here that you're going to see. And then the photographs from uh, some of his work have uh, come in and they've kind of been timed to the music uh, with a, a nice sort of elegant sort of fade out or, or blur out and then bring into the next, uh, next item here. Th this first uh, first piece here, the photographs were so good that I wanted to, to actually zoom in uh, to all of them on the um, on the issue of Gimp Magazine. So what I did was I, I created kind of a contact sheet for the first three images um, uh, of the same model, uh, just to show that this is what Aaron, you know, provided, and this is what um, you know somebody who does layout. This is how it how it laid out on the page. And these images were fantastic to do the layout with because um, they had a lot of negative space. I'm a huge fan of negative space, as some of you have probably guessed. Uh, a lot of white space or negative space in my page. I like that. I prefer that as a designer. And this gave me an opportunity to place some text in, in those areas. And um, it's just kind of a fun teaser we did uh, to thank you guys for staying with us uh, over the summer. And um, I like to kind of the wrap up of this teaser here, how it, how it just kind of, the music just abruptly ends. And, and I, I wanted to do that. I just wanted to see how that would feel because it, it's, it's hard to pull it off. I'm not sure if I did pull it off, but it's, uh, it, it, was, it was fun to do anyways. So I'm just going to jump right in and tell you a little bit about the vision of GIMP Magazine. Um, the editor's note talks about um, sort of the vision in detail. I'll just give the highlights of that. I mean, basically, we're looking at um, uh, streamlining our magazine so that we can, we can basically run it on a monthly basis. And in order to do that, we needed to um, cut something out. And what we decided to cut out was print. So we're no longer going to be issuing Gimp Magazine in print format. Now, I loved the way Gimp Magazine um, felt as the print experience. I mean, it was great. You know, you, you waited for the printed copy to arrive. You, you got that unboxing sort of moment. And then the, the printed copy itself was just, it was phenomenal. I loved it. Um, you know, that, that's, it's, it's not the same with, with digital format. But we definitely made the move to go digital, and that opens us up to some tremendous opportunities. And, um, and, and one is it allows us to go monthly. And two is it, it, it gives me a, a design sort of page that can look awesome. Designing on 8.5 by 11 is, is horrible. It's probably the worst design um, uh, size to work with. And uh, I love 16 by 9. I've been working with it for quite a while, and um, you can do some really wild things with it. So I'm going to be experimenting with that. It's the the magazine today is certainly not the final state of, of what it wants to be. I want to introduce more video to that. I want to I want to move it towards more of an e-learning kind of platform. We're not quite there yet because I don't think the tools are available just yet to uh, to move fully in that direction. At least not the open source tools. Um, although they're they're coming. And, and I'm seeing some amazing things happen in, in some of those areas, so I'm, I'm keeping watch of those. But that's one of the things we wanted to do with uh, with Game Magazine is, is move away from print, and, and now that we're fully digital, we can, we can do some cool things. So what you're looking at right now is, uh, is the first page, or the cover. We decided to keep the cover in its same look, and page two is sort of the next gen cover. And we're we're going to sort of mirror that as we go. And maybe someday the, the formal 8.5 by 11 cover will die and we'll just move forward with the new cover format here. 
On page three here, we have how to get started with GIMP. And um, as I mentioned before, the letter from the editor. Uh, ways to contact us and follow us on page five here. Um, something new about ads. So we've completely changed our ad model because we're digital. And we've been able to reduce our ads down to basically $99 for a full page. And, and um, your ads, of course, would be copyright as in our, our masthead description there. And um, we would love it if, if you guys would advertise with us and, um, and be a part of uh, supporting Git Magazine on an ongoing basis. I mean, that would be fantastic. Um, we've also moved to uh, a system called Patreon. And what you can do with Patreon is instead of sending us, you know, a $5 donation occasionally to Git Magazine, what you could do is, is send like a dollar donation to Patreon for every issue that we roll out. Or you could send us $5 or whatever amount you want. It's up to you. You can opt out at any time you like. And um, you can use PayPal or credit card to, uh, to, to sign up and, and set up that, um, uh, that service. Now, this was some work that, uh, that Aaron did. And um, uh, I was blown away with Aaron's photography. And um, I, I, just, I just really loved the work. And uh, this was a perfect platform for displaying his, his, uh, his photography in this article. And I'm, I'm not going to go through every page here, but I just like the way the layout worked and how, you know, there was a lot of negative space that I was able to design the, the article around. And um, it just it played really well with the photographs. And, and that was, it was a pleasure to, uh, to design that going through here all the way up into the end. And on page 20 here, I'll just mention that um, uh, this was an interesting story. I mean, I, mean, if you, you, I w certainly want you to read this. Um, this was an update that we had from Aaron. So I'll give you a little bit of the history. We were probably compiling this article in the, the spring of 2014. It was like March or April. I think we were actually putting it together and, and, and writing it. And um, and then we had uh, some time off with GIMP Magazine, and I'll, I'll talk more about that in a little bit. And uh, um, essentially what happened between writing the article and then finally publishing the article in that long gap was Aaron had shifted to commercial-based software. And when we got to publishing it, we contacted Aaron back for a couple of items, and, and he mentioned this to us, and he wasn't sure if he wanted to go forward with it. And I, I thought, you know, absolutely go forward. I mean, this is something that the GIMP community needs to know about, is is why someone would go to commercial software as opposed to stay with open source. And his response was just was just really honest and, and excellent. And I really appreciated that, and, and I hope that our readers can respect what we've done with this magazine and, and, and how we've published this and, and how we tried to be as open and honest about, um, about some of the reasons of, of why people leave, why people stay, and why people come uh, to using open source free software. So, uh, so I really like this piece and, and I just wanted to sort of, uh, sort of highlight that in the, uh, in the notes here. Here's a, a couple of ads from people on our team. We've got Dave here, uh, Dave Lepic, um, who helps us on sort of the business side of uh, Gimp Magazine and, and some of the direction and strategy. We've got Rolf, who's um, helping us on the website side and the, obviously the photography and just the whole open source world. And then of course we've got Debbie, uh, Debbie Dalio, who's, who's responsible for editing uh, Gimp Magazine. And she's the one who is um, who's really sort of the heart of GIMP Magazine, pulling all the articles together. And um, she was the one that got Aaron on board and, and both articles from Aaron and um, editing those, compiling all the images and, and making all that work and then doing a final review of the magazine. She's also responsible for um, sort of commenting on some of the business things that come into Miss, um, uh, GIMP Magazine. And, uh, and looking at those and, and providing some, uh, some insight on that. So, uh, so special thanks to Deb 
um, uh, for doing all of that. And moving on to um, our gallery here, love this shot on uh, on page 25, and uh, um, I think it's just just fantastic. And um, of course, it's tilt shift photography here. Something I would love to do. I've never tried it before, but this is all this is this is a regular photograph that's been post processed to create tilt shift. So it's not using a tilt shift lens, it's a regular lens, but it's, it's, it's done using um, uh, post-processing. And it's a shot, I believe it's in Toronto, and uh, it's just a really, really cool shot because I can see some local things here and it's, and it's, uh, it's quite nice. And, uh, and on page 45, or sorry, on page 26, we've got some, some pretty amazing uh, photography as well. Uh, shot out of Germany and uh, a couple of other really nice shots here in our gallery. We've combined the photography gallery and the digital arts gallery into one uh, just to simplify things and um, uh, moving forward here uh, we've got some work that I've created and um, I've got to provide a little description there and this is all um, this is all digital type that I've been creating over the last few years, and I'll talk more about that at the end of the uh, uh, the end of the magazine here. But that is all processed with GIMP, 100%, and um, the 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 type part, and then the October Fest is laid out in Inkscape um, as a finishing sort of touch there. On page 32, we've got the uh, literary connection, and this was a, a book. Um, cover that I did for a company and um, these were six or eight different options that I provided them with um, it was all done completely 100 percent in uh, in Inkscape and um, it was quick it was fast and and they they loved the end product and love the fact that they got eight different versions as well I teach all this in in my courses here the digital arts course and the uh, desktop publishing course and one of the things I want to talk to you about is one of the reasons why we had kind of the summer off with GIMP Magazine is because I was, have been working on um, writing a book and uh, I completed a book on Gothic Fracture, uh, a little bit of the history of Fracture as well as uh, sort of how to do uh, Gothic Fracture calligraphy. And, um, and I've, got, I've got a little video here that I want to, I want to call up. So what I've done is I've called up Scribus here, and I've got my Gothic calligraphy book that um, that I wrote. Um, it basically took me about six months to write this book, and it was all laid out in Scribus. And you can see the objects here on the page that are moving around, um, the text frames, the drop caps, that was a custom drop cap. and. Um, and these are all things that Scribus does. It was fantastic for preparing this book. I feel completely confident with doing this, um, using completely free and open source software. And um, I would encourage everyone to, uh, to certainly give it a try if, if, if writing a book is something you want to do. And this is an example of a more complicated page where there's several objects and, and it's fairly technical. So what I've done here is, is I've just used this as a plate and I brought it in from Inkscape. So I'm using, again, another free and open source piece of software called Inkscape, freely download it. And these are all the objects. Now this is movable type that I custom developed myself and which is kind of the subject of the calligraphy book. And I can move that around and design it any way I want, size it, color it, whatever. And then these are some sample objects that I have on the left hand side that I can just drag and drop onto the page to help people learn how to do calligraphy, which is sort of the purpose of the book. Now, these slides can be exported, pulled into Scribus, but then Scribus can also export every single page to a, um, basically a bitmap image. And then what I can do is I can use that bitmap image in a video course in order to teach people calligraphy, and that's something I've also offered and I created over the summertime. And so I've got the book, 
the video course and then the live course, all three kind of go together um, as, a, as a teaching medium to, to learn calligraphy. Now, of course, if you're not interested in calligraphy, that's fine, but you can use this for any subject matter that you have, and that's kind of the point here, is, um, is you can do all of this with open source software. And, um, and I felt great doing it. Like, it was, it was absolutely amazing. There were no limitations. There were no, you know, difficulties that I had. Nothing like that. It was, it was really great. So, um, so I just wanted to tell you about that because this is, what, this is what GIMP is all about. This is what open source is all about. And creating the Gothic eBook is very similar to creating GIMP magazine. So what you're looking at here on the screen is uh, a shot of uh, GIMP Magazine inside of Scribus. You can see the page numbers highlight there. You can see the, uh, the logo appear as a, a separate text object that's brought in, or a graphic object that's brought in. And I can scroll through the pages here and you can see that this is done in a, in a similar fashion here. And you can see that when the text starts to come in, these are text objects that, I, that use, utilize something called styles. Again, the logo, and so on. These are all objects that Scribus manages really, really well. But what I find is I actually like doing some of the image work in Inkscape. Inkscape is a beautiful package for doing layout. And um, of course, of course, when I get these photos, I should tell you that all the, the heavy lifting photo manipulation has already been done, in this case by Aaron. Uh, for the photo itself. And you can see that full-size photo that he gave me. It's very high resolution. It was done in GIMP. I can look at that. I can zoom in. I can call up the uh, page size here, which has been designed around 16 by 9. I can get fine-tuning settings and then simply export that um, out of Inkscape and then pull it back into Scribus and away I go. And it's as simple as that. It's really fine-tuning. Um, and, and it's, uh, I love working in that, in that way. So just to wrap up on that piece, um, really uh, three pieces of software that work great together, GIMP, Inkscape, and Scribus. And I use all three. I use them in conjunction with one another. And uh, I think they're fantastic. I do offer, like I said, two courses on them. Uh, desktop publishing, which is primarily Scribus, and then the first one, the digital arts course, which is both GIMP and Inkscape. And the value that I bring to that course is is teaching it from the perspective of a digital artist and, and everything that I can bring from that perspective. So that's a little bit about that. Um, I just want to move on here to the, uh, to the uh, tutorial the master class from Aaron here. And um, I think this was fantastic. I love the before and after sort of progression of it, as well as how it laid out on the page. And it's pretty clear and easy to see and to go from there. Um, one of the things that I'd like to do, um, given our new format with GIMP Magazine, is, is sort of provide um, provide not only in addition to, to uh, printed tutorials or master classes, but also video tutorials and master classes. So the idea would be is we would work with an artist to do sort of a feature story about them and their art, and then we would get them to do a tutorial, both written as well as video. Or perhaps, if it's easier, just a video tutorial that would go with it, and we can include it in um, in our director's cut here um, edition of, uh, of GIMP magazine. So those are some possibilities that we want to explore in the future um, with the magazine itself. Uh, this is the, the advert for the, uh, the, the Gothic calligraphy course that I was telling you about earlier. Um, both a book as well as a video um, that I make available on uh, GIMP magazine's website if you just go to uh, slash courses. Um, if you're not ready for Patreon, but you just want to give us a donation, there's a link to it here um, that you can click on. Or if you just go to GIMP Magazine slash gift shop, uh, right in the menu item at the top, you can do that as well. We would certainly appreciate that. That goes towards helping pay for some of the costs that we have to pay for running a free magazine. So things like um, website, um, 
things like uh, online storage. There's a number of different sort of subscriptions that we have to kind of cover off, and it would be great if, if you could help us to do that. Um, we also have here submissions. So we are looking for submissions from people from all over the world who use, uh, who use not only GIMP, but also open source software uh, with that. What, what we're finding a lot of is that is people who may not be primarily GIMP, like in the case of Aaron, but people who use GIMP in conjunction with something else, like Blender or other tools like that. And if you're a Blender user that also uses GIMP, by all means, we would love to hear from you. We would love to get you on the front cover of GIMP magazine to show off some of the amazing things that you do. Because really, GIMP is, is sort of the, the primary foundation of a lot of other pieces of work that go on. So, and these are all interconnected by, by some way. So, um, so it would be great to hear from you if, if, uh, if you do that kind of work. Um, we're also looking for people to join the team itself. So if you have uh, editing skills or if you want to write articles or perhaps you're a photographer that's uh, quite experienced in the field and you want to join us from, uh, from a sort of a contributing um, uh, writer's perspective, that would be amazing. We're certainly looking for that. We're absolutely looking for that. And the last page here on page 45 is just the, uh, the advert for a project that I'm working on um, about releasing a designer type. And, and that is, uh, these are not fonts. These are very high resolution, uh, 300 DPI um, typesets that um, are basically drag and drop and you can create whatever artwork that you want to create. They're not designed for doing entire books, although doing an entire book would look amazing. But they're more so designed for doing um, cover art and uh, movie title screens, uh, TV screens, um, book covers, posters, cards. I mean, there's a million different applications for this kind of stuff. And that's, uh, that's what I'm rolling out. So I've been developing these. I have about 30 years of uh, calligraphy experience. And I've been putting these together for quite a few years. And, uh, and GIMP is actually the, the primary tool that I use to build these out. Now these are all done authentically by hand and then they're scanned in and then they're processed using uh, some tools that I've built inside of uh, GIMP. And, and I hope to write about this in, uh, in an upcoming article of, uh, of GIMP magazine as well. So, uh, so with that, um, thank you very much for, for listening in on the uh, uh, director's uh, cut here edition of uh, GIMP magazine. And uh, hope to see you for, um, for issue seven. And we're looking forward to it. And hopefully that should come out in uh, December if everything's going well. All right, thanks a lot. Bye now.